Hi there, I'm Rupsi, and in this video, we'll go over 20 things to build in survival Minecraft. Now, before we start building, we of course need to gather up some materials, and you know, get the whole survival game going. To start off, I always try to gather up some iron for tools and armor, and then do these four things. Collect some wheat seeds, get some sugar cane, locate a few cows, and find a village. And then when you are in that village, make sure to lock some of those villagers up inside of their homes, because uh, you'll need them later on. Once those four things are taken care of, we can go look for a suitable place to build our base. Starting off with the first thing of today's video, the wheat farm. I like to do this before getting started with our starter house, because everything can grow up while we're working on the rest. You might wonder why go with wheat seeds, bread isn't really the best food source, and well, that's because we needed to breed cows. And that's what our second build will be, the cow pen. Right here I went for quite an easy design, but quickly figured out that this design won't work that well, because, well, cows happen to have better knees than I suspected. They can easily jump over a block in a trapdoor, so I needed to fix that. And third, a sugarcane farm. Just place them next to the water for now, we can clean that up later on. And after about one and a half hours of survival gameplay, I realized, why am I doing all of this in survival myself? I just want to show you guys what you can build in your world, so to save time and to be able to give my buildings a little bit of pizzazz, I switched over to creative. First giving the wheat farm a quick update, just mixing a few of the blocks together and giving the cow pen a bit of a bigger upgrade, turning it into a nice looking barn. Still starter friendly though. After that I got on with creating the starter house. The starter house is kind of the first big milestone for a builder survival world. I really wanted to use the blocks that are available to you in the first 2-3 to three hours of survival, so the blocks used here are mostly different types of wood, some stone variants and deep slate. I also wanted to make the house look a bit more special, so I decided to create a tower on the side of the house, mainly to be able to create some interesting roof designs. For our fifth item on the list, we need to create a mine entrance. Now normally I would create something that represents a big sturdy door, but since I want to create a small village in this video, I opted for a house. Now in my opinion, one of the best houses to build on the side of a hill is a hobbit home. But instead of a home, in this one there is some storage and a big staircase down to the mine. After using basic tools and armor for a while, it is time to make ourselves an enchanting station. This is something you could just place inside of your starter house, but I like to separate the two from each other. And that way, have an excuse to create a whimsical looking building. Although truth be told, this one is a bit more survival friendly instead of uh, really whimsical and fantastical. Really quick, if you're liking this video so far, please consider hitting that like button. It helps me out a ton and it will hopefully get this video out to many other people. At the time of recording, I am literally 2 subscribers away from hitting 2000 subs on YouTube and it is my goal to hit 10,000 subscribers in this year. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe as well and let's get on with the video. Now let's start to expand a little bit. The next door village was kind enough to give us some other crops, so we need to create a few more fields. That way we are growing some wheat, carrots, potatoes and beetroot. I also made the exact same barn design I made for the cows, but designated this one for a few sheep. And after that I also wanted to make a cool looking chicken coop, but for some reason I keep forgetting that animals can jump, so it needed a bit more fencing surrounding the coop itself. Next up is the strip mine. Sometimes it's nice to just be able to gather up some materials without the need of wandering through the huge cave. This one was quite difficult to show using the replay mod, so here is what it looks like in game. The staircase down went through a big open dripstone cave, so I decided to make some support beams over here and I think it looks pretty cool. Now that we are a bit further into the game, we have probably collected quite the array of blocks, which means we will need a better place to store all of that. We need a storage room. I placed this building kind of in between the mine entrance and the rest of the buildings we've made so far. This way, the storage room is never super far away. I also made sure to make the building big enough to fit a lot of chests, with even more space up on the second floor in case we need it for more stuff. On the inside, both walls are covered with chests and I made these little arches with item frames to organize the room a bit. If moving the storage out of our starter house is step 1, that means step 2 is the furnaces. Close to our mine, I made this super smelter, which is designed by Mr. Cat. Since I don't understand redstone that well, I chose to put nothing else inside of here as to not mess with the system. On the outside, I covered it up with another hobbit home to fit in with the mine entrance which is to our left from here. Building number 11 is the nether portal, and instead of hiding this away somewhere in the mine, I wanted to use the portal to tell a story. So I made it inside of a ruined tower using some red nether bricks to make it look like parts of the nether are seeping into the overworld. The story being that maybe the ancient civilization that was here did a ritual and it went horribly wrong. 
We need to prepare to face the Ender Dragon now, so go into the Nether, collect the Blaze Rods and Ender Pearls you need for the Eye of Enders, locate the End Portal, and go defeat the Ender Dragon. After all of that non-builder nonsense, we can go ahead and make an Enderman farm. This is, as far as I know, the easiest way to get experience points quick. We will need that to upgrade our gear even more and to repair it with mending eventually. I followed the tutorial by Shokercraft to create this Enderman farm and since it's also a mechanic I don't know much about, I chose to make this the only creation I just left as is. Instead of trying to make it look pretty and accidentally messing up the whole farm. I mean, today I'd already made mistakes with jumping cows and chickens, but Endermen won't get the best of me. All they got to do is see the Endermite up top, try to attack it, fall down all the way over here, for me to one hit punch them with my fist and get experience points and Ender Pearls. Adding back to the overworld, it's time to work with villagers. We will need a bunch of villagers to get lots of different useful traits, but before we can do that, we need the villagers themselves and the villager breeder. At the beginning of the video, we locked up some villagers in their village houses, so if I was in survival, I would have let two of them into this structure where they can breed with each other to give me infinite villagers. Since we are further into the game, probably have unlocked the Elytra and stuff right now, I decided to up my building game right here and make the buildings look a bit more extravagant. I hope you also like how this one turned out. So I already kind of spoiled the fact that we'll make a villager trading hall, but not yet. Before that, I want to make an iron farm. That way we can have armorer villagers with the iron to emerald trade and with the help of the iron farm, basically get unlimited emerald. I am making the iron farm first because that means that we'll start collecting free iron before we need it to trade. This took so long to build because the iron farm itself had a few complications, like I didn't make the ground high enough on the sides of the farm, so the iron golems could spawn next to where they needed to spawn. And then the structure I made around it, although coming out really nicely, took around two and a half hours to make. So in total, this iron farm was right around three and a half to four hours. And that is while building in creative. I don't mind it though, because building is what I like to do in this game. But just as a warning, be prepared when you're making something on a bigger scale like this. Since the iron farm took so long, I told myself to go a bit easier on the trading hall. Instead I went even harder. This villager trading hall took right around 5 hours to build. I wanted to experiment with some new blocks and colors, and since I used mud for the iron farm and I really like the color of that, I wanted to implement that here as well. After tinkering a little bit, I went for a stone base, uh, as I've done with nearly all of the buildings so far, then mud bricks and packed mud for the middle part using a little bit of stripped jungle wood as well, and then deep slate for the roof. This villager trading hall is somewhat inspired by the United States Capitol building, and up top I really wanted to make that dome-shaped centerpiece, but I colored it green to represent emeralds, making it easier to understand what's going on inside. This is probably my favorite building that I've made in this video but we've got some more to show you also here's what the inside of the villager trading hall looks like we got armor villagers right here in front to exchange iron for emeralds and librarian villagers everywhere else i kept the second floor empty ready to be extended although i did make an emerald chandelier right over here with that we basically have all of the useful buildings out of the way but if you're still here that probably means that you are interested in building stuff in minecraft so uh yeah, let's get going on and build some more. Number 16 is a sniffer farm. This is something I've never actually made before in Minecraft, but for a builder, it's actually really nice to have. That's because sniffers are the only way to get yourself the torch flowers and the pitcher plants. The design I use for the collection system of this sniffer farm is made by Armin, and I really love how this building turned out. The sniffers just look so cute roaming around over here. Moving on to something that isn't useful at all, but makes a lot of sense to have. Quite a lot of buildings we've made already are made out of wood, but where does the wood come from? We need a woodcutter's cabin, and also a forest for the woodcutter's cabin, so I just planted a buttload of trees. Now, of course the woodcutter's cabin isn't actually used for collecting wood. We do that by just chopping down trees ourselves. But you could make an automatic tree farm and hide it away as something like this. I didn't opt for that however, my cabin is purely made for aesthetics. Another building you can make in your survival world, mostly for the looks, is a windmill. It makes sense to have one in between the crop fields, maybe as a place to store your products. 
or as I said with the cabin, to perhaps have an automatic crop farm hidden beneath. To add to the windmill, I also made a few new fields surrounding it to really give it its well-deserved spot in our village. Or you can go all out and make the ultimate thing in Minecraft, a castle. I didn't make this castle right now for this video, this is a castle I made I think about 3 years ago, but since I wanted to release this video this year, I opted to not build one for this video uh, to make it into a 30 second time lapse because that would just feel like a really big waste of time. For something that I made three years ago, I do think it looks pretty nice, but if I may say so myself, I do think that I have luckily improved at building, even though there are some cool decorations over here like this flag post being connected down here with two levers. That is something I might be able to use once again. I'll just do a quick cinematic flyby for now of this castle, but if you want to see the entire build process as well as the interior, feel free to check out this uh, two to three year old video, which to be fair is a little bit lower quality than what you're used of me right now, but it is still an alright video. So, number 20. This is maybe the most important thing to add to your Minecraft world, not because of the thing itself, but because it acts as the glue that keeps your village together. It's pets! Because, let's be honest, this looks way better than this. The pets that I created right here are simply made out of path blocks, a little bit of coarse dirt and pot soil, and some spruce slabs to create smooth inclines. It is something that is really easy to create, but be sure to do that because otherwise it just kinda looks like you copy pasted some buildings here and there, instead of making a cohesive thing. The squid is dying over there. Anyways, those were 20 things to build in your Minecraft world. You can see most of them behind me over here, uh, currently missing like the end farm and the smelter, which is behind the nether portal over there. I hope you enjoyed this video and also got some inspiration for your own builds. If that's the case, my job here is completed. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're still here all the way to the end, thank you so much, especially to you. Yes, you. Please leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it and also subscribe to my channel for more content. I create Minecraft videos like this one as well as some other gaming related content. That's it from me for today. Perhaps you can watch this other video right here besides me. YouTube handpicked it for you so it might be fun. I hope to see you later. Bye bye.